Hi everybody, I'm Ala Brunot from Alchemical Works, which is my one-man studio where I make the game Battlejuice Alchemist. In this video, I want to show you how I created the world that makes up Battlejuice Alchemist, which is 3D and procedurally generated. This means that an algorithm puts together the world and it is different every time you play. This video might be interesting for people who want to take a look behind the curtain of game development, but maybe also for other game developers. As a heads up for developers, this is not a tutorial. The way I create my tile-based world is surely not the perfect way how to do it, but it works for me and I would like to show you the principal ideas behind my algorithm. I hope you're excited to see how a world can be randomly generated in a video game. Let's get started. The first thing you need to know about the world of Battlejuice Alchemist is that it is tile-based. A tile, in its most basic form, is a flat square that makes the smallest unit of a landscape. If you put many tiles next to each other, you get a very simple landscape. Before you can create mountains, valleys and so on from your tiles, you have to make a very important decision. How big do you want your tiles to be? Battlejuice Alchemist is actually the third time I created a tile-based world. The first time was for a first-person pirate game in a different engine, Unity. My tiles were huge, as big as a whole volcano, which visually worked okay for this game, but I ran into performance issues later on. The second time, this time an RPG in Unreal Engine, I went for really small tiles that were only as big as a single character. This was also okay for that type of game but felt a bit more like a Minecraft level. In this science fiction RPG, I splitted the world into tile-based levels, which is a concept I also use in Battlejuice Alchemist. Here, a level is made from 400 tiles. A tile is big enough for a piece of a river or a small building. The player can travel from level to level by selecting it on the world map, which I am implementing right now and will show in another video. Every single level is quite big and there's a lot to discover. You can seamlessly travel inside such a 400 tile level, although there are only 25 tiles loaded around the player at a time. So this is our basic setup. The whole world of Battlejuice Alchemist is divided into levels. Each level consists of 400 tiles, which is 20 times 20 tiles. What you do not realize as a player is that only 25 of these tiles are loaded around you at a time. In a level you can go explore and do your quests and once you are done you can go to another level. You can always return if you want to. Now you may ask yourself how are mountains and rivers and valleys created from tiles. I use Unreal Engine's blueprint system to write my code. What you see here is the code that creates the tile-based landscape. First of all, when a level is created, some tiles are moved up or down randomly. There are methods to make quite organic tile-based landscape by calculating where mountains and valleys need to be based on a noise map. But I found this to be impractical for me because I only have 20 times 20 tiles and relatively small height differences. I randomly move chunks up or down and then again move their centers further up or down. That's all and it works great for the landscape I wanted to make. Now tiles that are at borders of height differences are turned into slopes. Where two slopes meet at an angle there needs to be a corner. These tiles like all others must be modeled in a 3D program before of course. We now have a very basic terrain. All tiles that are below level 0 are underwater, so a water surface is added to them. Let's continue with making rivers. We pick a random tile on level 0 to be the start of our river. Then we create more river tiles going upwards. If there is an upward slope, a small waterfall is created as the river's source. From the original starting tile, more river tiles going downwards are added. If there is a downward slope to level minus one, means the river has hit the sea and ends. Now we basically have mountains, valleys and rivers. 
we tell the higher tiles that they need a rocky texture and the lower ones, which are partly underwater, to have a sandy texture. The borders between different texture types are created by a system that is similar to the one creating the slopes and corners, which we discussed before. Around the edges of the level, some steeper slopes are added, which the player cannot cross. This completes our basic landscape. It can now be populated with plants, buildings and other objects, but also by creatures. But placing all of that in a level is something for another video. One beautiful thing about procedurally generated worlds is the fact that every part of the land knows its own characteristics. A river knows it's a river and a sound can be added, or a mountain knows it's a mountain, so turtles don't spawn up there. I hope you liked this little peek into how the landscapes of Battlejuice Alchemist are created. If there's a different part of the game that you would like me to explain a bit more, just let me know in the comments. But that's all for today. You can wishlist Battlejuice Alchemist on Steam, there's a link for that in the description. You can also follow me here on YouTube or support me on Patreon if you like. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Bye.